What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a Kali Linux live USB with encrypted persistence. Let's begin. First, you want to go ahead and download the Kali Linux live. I'll be having the 64 bit version over here. Then we're going to need a tool to burn it to a USB. I recommend using Rufus. It makes the whole process faster and easier. So download all of that and then let's begin. You want to go ahead and fire up Rufus. Once you've done that, make sure you plug in your USB. You can see mine over here. I have a 16 gig one. And then let's select the image file we just downloaded. That's the one right there. Now you want to create your persistent partition. Since I have 16 gigs, I'm going to drag this all the way up to 10. I believe that should be good. You want to calculate depending on how many gigabytes you have available. Once you've done that, hit start. Okay, buddy. And let's go. All right, cool. Once you're done with burning the USB, let's go ahead and restart into Kali Linux. All right, make sure you access your boot menu. And right now we're going to go ahead and boot Kali Live, the first option, because we need to do some configuring before the encrypted persistence is active. All right, once we're in Kali, let's go ahead and open a terminal. From here, you could do sudo fdisk minus L and you can see we can locate the USB right here because it's got 16 gigs and it has the two partitions clearly this one is the persistence partition so let's go ahead and create an encrypted volume over there so you do crypt setup verbose verify passphrase Luke's format oops and the exact location for it, mine is devsdb2. Then we get a type yes in capital letters. Let's put in a strong passcode here. We gotta verify it. There we go, we've created the encryption. Now we gotta open the encrypted container. So let's do sudo crypt setup. Uh, Luke's open dev sdb2 and I'm gonna use encrypted data as the name for this container it will ask you for the passcode you just input so type it in one more time all right so we've opened up the encrypted container now let's go ahead and make the file system extended three and we're gonna do slash dev mapper and slash encrypted data which has to be the same name you input it earlier here so if you have two encrypted containers you can name them according to whatever you're gonna use them for let's hit run there we go once that's done we gotta give a label to the persistence partition so let's call it persistence as is the default with Kali so we'll do dev mapper encrypted data persistence all right now we're into the final few commands here so let's create a directory here so make directory so this is where the USB is actually mounted so let's go ahead and mount it like that and we'll put the location There we go, we've mounted at the location we just created the directory. Let me cd into this location and from here we could do uh, sudo touch persistence dot 
config. And we can do, uh, let's do V, yeah, VIM like that. And I can press the I key. And then we just have to write slash union. And then we can press escape, double dots, right, quit. There we go. And if you do a cat persistence, you can see it's got the exact line of text we need for it to be recognized as a persistence partition. And that's basically it. Now we can go ahead and unmount the dev mapper encrypted data container. Uh, oh yeah, it's busy because I am on this directory. So let's go back to home and we can run the command again. Yep, that does it. And finally, we got to close the Luke's. Uh, so let's do a Luke's close dev mapper encrypted data. All right, sweet. That's everything. So if we restart now, we should be able to boot from the Kali encrypted persistence. So let's try that out. And at this time you want to do live USB encrypted persistence. And it should ask us for the passcode and set up the Luke's container automatically. Let's see if it works. There we go. You can see it's asking us to unlock the disk. So go ahead and type in your passcode. And there we go. At this point, anything that you do should be saved. So if you go ahead and change your wallpaper or something or create a new directory or anything of that type, it should be saved for the future. You can update all your tools, do whatever you like. And that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you guys next time.